My name is Elisa Ferry, and I've been the lead manicurist for the Mark Jacobs and Mark by Mark for about 15 years now. Okay. And it's a joy working with Mark because he's very hands-on, very specific. He knows exactly what he wants. So C&D is my sponsor, and the beautiful thing about C&D is they have a huge palette of colors. So it makes it so much easier for the designer because he has so many choices. Mm -hmm. um, for me, my feeling is... Um, the pails are kind of out and bright colors are in. Okay. When you see the wardrobe, you're going to be very excited about it. Well, I, I'm very excited to see the color in your hand already. Yes, this is <laughs> it. it. It is it is an absolute flawless, perfect thing. It has what just, is it called? It's called uh, Raspberry Parfait. Uh huh. Good looking bottle, yep. great looking color. And it is absolutely, uh, it's a jewel tone. You know, it's saturated with pigment. And it gives full coverage. You can get full coverage on one coat of uh, polish. Um, or if you want to use two, that's fine. But when you're doing a fashion show, particularly backstage, you don't have much time. So if you take a look at the wardrobe, you see all the bright, yep. uh, pure colors. This is what I... So did he ask you specifically, I want a bright, hot pink? Yes, he did. He said, I want a range of pinks and fuchsias. And he zeroed Perfect. into this color. and. That was it. The story was over. And now, fingers and toes? No, no. Okay. The hands are different. It's oh, a, that's toes. It's never okay. been about matchy-matchy. Okay. So what, what we did is we took um, Perfectly Bare from the 2011 collection, and we made a combination with the matte top coat, and we created a custom mix to make the girl's nails look natural, flawless, but with just a little hint of coverage. Okay. Similar. Well, similar, same texture as last night at the Marc Jacobs show, that kind of frizzy, but I'm just sort of pulling it back differently. A little bit younger, um, yeah, more girly, more Mark by Mark kind of thing. But, you know, he liked that texture so much, he wanted to keep it for this show. Fine. Um, it's a texture that everyone loves. It's very girly, very soft, very pretty. It's always like, you know, and the thing is, the trouble is, it's a bit of a hard job to get done. It's not something you can do quickly. It is the pin set. Um, you know, you have to put um, some product in. I'm using the thickening lotion first to base the hair, damp, rough drying it, do the pin, the rip wrap, which is a nightmare, clamp it with a hair dryer, um, clamp it with the straightening irons, use quick dry hairspray, which is another raping product, to seal that in, then brush it all out just for a bit of fluff. So it is a bit of a drag and it is a bit of a thing, but it is a very kind of pretty, girly thing, and I think girls love it, do you know what I mean? Because it's sort of bouncy and it's there and it's not a curl. So if you do fancy, you know, a change, you know, it would last a few days and if you're going somewhere special, it'd probably get better than, you know, it's more it's left onto. So it's a great style if you've got patience to do it. How do you do the rip? Yeah. So it's a pin, you get a section of hair and you'd like weave it in and out of the pin. A bobby pin? A bobby pin. Well, not a bobby pin, just a straight pin, like a pin, not like a... So you sort of going like that. And then you hold it and then clamp it with spray. So it's a zigzag thing, and then you take it out and then it frizzes it up. And you get quite small sections, you're yes, doing? Yes, quite small sections, yeah. Well, obviously, you, it depends on how tight you want the frizz. Smaller sections, you know, tight to the frizz, bigger section, looser it is. How long does it take to do all those things? long time. So we don't really have long enough to do it, but we have to do it to yeah. answer your question. Do you know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah I mean, if you, for yeah. civilians, I would say if you're using lip gloss or stuff like that around the eyes, then skip the mascara or have your eyelashes dyed so you don't worry about the transfer so much. Dye the eyelashes, or if you don't mind a little bit of smudge, then it's fine. Or you can also use liquid liner before balm because it's a bit more permanent. You get a bit more of a stain in the lash line and then it won't smudge around too much. Yeah, just look at the collection with the idea of the girl who she's going to possibly be in the clothes. And, you know, Mark sends out this army and this, like, all the chaos and noise with just impact. You, I mean, basically, you want to tell the story as soon as the first girl steps out there. So. Did you use pigment powder on the lips? Yes. We've got this super orange pigment. We had a bunch of, I mean, this is some of the rejects. But right. we, had a bunch, we had a bunch of pigments from the factory in Jersey, which yeah. I stole. <laughs> But some of them were too pearly and some of them, and then we had a very, very cool orange, right. and then we ground that down and added some right. face powder to it to give it a bit more slip. But um, basically, okay. I wanted it to be very matte. A lot of the pigments nowadays have pearl to them, yeah. which isn't really what I was after. And what do you, 
doing anything else with the eyes besides lip gloss on the lids? Oh, the black pencil goes in the lash line. Okay. The pencil, pencil goes on first, all around the eye, but not like not thick, just in the lashes, then we melt it a little bit with the lip, with the lip gloss. Because the pencil's going to move anyway with the lip balm, so you just sketch it into the right. lashes, the point of the pencil gets into the lash line, and then once you draw the balm over it, it kind of melts it all together. Right. Which you could do with a moisturizer or a wet Q-tip if you want to do a matte thing, you do it with a shadow rather than a pencil, if you skip the, you know, the lip balm, which is probably better for real life.